Good day, everybody. My name is Oscar and welcome back to more Subnautica Below Zero. Now, this episode, we have a ton of new stuff to cover. They've added loads of new areas where you can now instantly teleport to, so more story-related stuff, and also some just awesome new biomes. We've also got a new creature, which probably will have been in the title, or at least the thumbnail, so you should be able to know what that is by now. And also, we've got some new story stuff from the Favro cards, about what they're planning to do with Old Terra and the whole Jeffrey's story situation. So, we've got a lot of stuff to cover, but it should be pretty fun. First off, we're gonna quickly have a look at the new go-to menu, because they've added a lot of new places where you can instantly fast travel to. So, there's a lot of things here that I don't remember seeing before, so that's interesting to see. But the main ones that we're gonna look at today are the ones to do with the glacial basin. Um, and this is a new biome which I think is where the snow stalkers are mainly going to be based. I'm not sure if they're going to be based in these sort of areas with lots of ice. I'm not, I'm not sure how they're going to work because I'm assuming they're going to prey on penguins. Um, assuming that's going to be their main sort of dinner. Um, but who knows. So we're going to go to them and there's also some new stuff to do with the story so this really isn't an episode you want to be watching if you don't want story spoilers because it's going to be based around a story almost entirely. First place we're gonna go to is the Glacial Basin as a whole. This seems like a whole new biome by itself. Um, I haven't been here yet so I don't know what this is. Obviously it's not finished. Well I don't know what this is but we've not seen this before. This is a heat fruit apparently. Pick up none. This is a heat fruit. I'm not sure what a heat fruit is. I'm assuming it's a fruit that you can eat. Oh it looks like a chili or something. I'm assuming it's a fruit you can eat when you're really cold and it heats you up. This is a lantern fruit which we've seen from the original game. Obviously not sure if they're going to keep these in. These are clearly just sort of placeholders. So this is potentially where you'll have to come to unlock the hover bike. There are three fragments here at the moment. They might reduce the amount that you get in the full game. These are some new... Um, f I don't know, I'm assuming they're flora. They're sort of a mixture of flora and just really cold snow or ice I suppose. They look really awesome. So we'll head on up here and have a look what is going on with these lights. That looks like a radio tower or something but it is currently matte black so I'm assuming that's gonna change. There seems to be like a collection of spotlights here. Um, yep they are spotlights and they're all grouped together for no reason at all just rotating creating a sort of disco. Apparently this is going to be Jeffrey's bunker. Oh okay so there is actually a base in here. I didn't know that. This looks like it's the hover bike base. Yep, so this is where you're going to come if you want to unlock the hover bike frag base fragment. This is an unfinished room with no walls or ceilings. Okay, those stairs don't work. Do these ones? No, they don't. So this looks like this is the place where Jeffries is going to be staying in this sort of bunker thing. At least that's the impression I'm getting um, and what's been said on my Discord server. By the way, if you are not in my Discord server, you really are missing out. Lots of the stuff in this video today has been reported on there exclusively. Haven't seen it anywhere else. And in fact, the news about the Snowstalker was revealed before the developers even commented on it. So that is how fast they are in there. So it's really worth looking at. Oh, okay. Yep, fell through that. That's not ready. And it looks like... Oh, there's a legitimate bridge. Obviously unfinished because you can see through it. Is it a physical object? Wow, it is. So this is a bridge that connects two bits of the glacier together. Seems to be how it is. I wonder what it will be on the other side once this is all finished. It's all very interesting because Altera have clearly been here and worked out for this stuff by themselves and decided that they need to build bridges and stuff here. And clearly Jeffries or whoever decided that they needed to build a bunker in the side of that. So it's awesome looking. Obviously it needs finishing, but it's really not looking bad at all. Then we have go to Frozen Creature. I'm assuming this will still be the placeholder um, skeleton from Subnautica 1. But this looks like it potentially will be the location of the Frozen Creature. Um, which I'm hoping is going to be a really awesome looking leviathan that maybe that we can't see alive in the game. Like, I, I feel like it would be a bit of a letdown if it was just a frozen squid shark or something, or a frozen... Um, oh, there it is, actually. That made me jump a little bit. So, yeah, it's still the placeholder from Subnautica, but in the future they will change this to a new creature. Hopefully a really awesome creature that we won't be able to see elsewhere in the game. There's also this, which is apparently a spy penguin test. I think 
it means that little hole there. But either way, it looks like they're setting up some sort of obstacle course for you to try out your spy penguin on. Um, which is cool, because obviously one of the main reasons for the spy penguin existing is that it can go into small gaps and spaces like this. Okay, so we'll head back to the glacial basin and we'll have a look at the snow stalker, which is the newest addition to the Subnautica Below Zero fauna gallery. Um, I haven't seen this in game yet, I've seen a lot of screenshots on my Discord server, but other than that I have not seen its animations or any footage of it whatsoever. So, let's have a look at this thing and see how it looks. Oh, wow! <laughs> that looks amazing! I, I don't know how I expected it to look, honestly, but to be, to be fair, I was slightly worried about the animations and stuff because Obviously their main experience had been with underwater creatures and I wasn't sure how they would manage a, a, a land creature But they've done a really good job with the animations. They look fantastic Obviously they were gonna do a good job because it's the Subnautica team, but even still it looks incredible It has glowing blue sort of they look like eyebrows almost, but I know they're not it has a glowing blue mouth and a glowing blue tail which seems to be a common feature um, as you can see with all of the creatures in Below Zero, they all seem to have this glowing tail, um, which is awesome to see. Absolutely awesome. It doesn't seem to be trying to take bites out of me, but I really, I mean, how can we tell, to be honest? But yeah, the, the colour scheme on him is absolutely awesome. Put it in daytime so we can actually see him. The fur looks incredible, and the animations in general look awesome. I'm just going to be evil for a second, and slash it with a knife and see if it responds. Um... No response at all. Uh, so, currently, they have no flinches or anything like that. Oh! But you can kill them. And when you kill them, they ascend diagonally to heaven. Interesting. Um, <laughs> that was obviously not finished. Wow, they really do look awesome. They're going to look amazing if they're in herds and, some, and stuff like that. I wonder if they'll be herd-based or, like, um, sort of lone wolves. They seem to be different sizes as well. Like, I'm pretty sure that one is smaller than that one. I can't tell for definite, but I think that's how they are. Either way, awesome looking creature. Really, really excited to see these guys fully implemented. Obviously, they're not not naturally spawning just yet, but can't wait for them to be. Now, also according to my Discord server, they can actually swim underwater. So for that, we're going to go to the shallow twisty bridges, because I feel like that's going to be one of the best places to really showcase their swimming abilities. Um, from the beginning, I've always hoped that they sort of swim like dogs with the doggy paddle. Um, and from the screenshots, it does sort of look like they do do swim like that, so I'm really interested to see how it actually does it. So, it does actually look at home here. Um, I thought it might not, but it turns out it probably does. I think it might be interested in me. I can't tell if the AI is... Yeah, I think it's trying to follow me, but I'm really not sure. But yeah, let's, let's spawn one underwater, because I'm really interested to see how they work. Oh, they do doggy paddle. That's amazing. <laughs> Wow, they're so cool! Yeah, they swim exactly how I hoped they would swim. I, I was hoping they wouldn't be like a proper, really good swimmer. I was hoping they'd be a sort of fumbling around polar bear sort of swimmer. Yeah, they've definitely perfected that. Obviously the animations need some work and the AI and stuff, but yeah, I, I really like the swimming. That looks awesome. And they do have an underwater death animation, and this actually works quite well compared to the one on land. They actually just sink to the bottom. Now, finally, we've got a little bit of story stuff to go through. It's only some Favreau cards. Um, so if you really don't want to know the huge spoilers of the story, then you might want to leave now. But other than that, you can stick around, and we'll just have a quick go through them. There's only three. So the first Favreau card is titled Place 5 Precursor Artifact Locations in the world. Now I'm not entirely sure what a precursor artifact is, I'm just assuming it's some sort of remnant of precursor technology, something along those lines. But it will be scannable and uh, they're going to be in placed in specific areas. Um, Corey has apparently created some artifacts already, uh, in fact, including a precursor statue, a navigation beacon, a water station, a relay satellite and an obelisk. An obelisk, if it's what I think it is, which is a really tall, sort of random statue block thing, that will look awesome. Especially if it's on land, but I'm assuming it might be underwater, but either way. And they've also got some possible locations for the artifacts. One in the kelp, one in deep twisty, one near the mining site, which is another card we'll look onto. 
One near an extinct volcano, which is a potentially new biome that I don't think has been talked about before in public. And one in the Leviathan Trench. Not sure what a Leviathan Trench is. Sounds terrifying. Possibly it's where the Shadow Leviathan is going to go. Maybe it just means where the Shadows, uh, where the Leviathan Skeleton is. Maybe it's just where a lot of Leviathans hang out. I'm not sure, but either way, don't want to go there because I'd rather stay alive. Uh, so second card is related to the first one. This is the Place Altera Mining Site card. Now this is about a mining site that's going to be run by Altera. Maybe it doesn't work anymore. Maybe it still does work. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to pan out. Um, but they're going to place it in the Thermal Spires Cave Network, and it will include a scannable exosuit and drill arm fragments nearby. Potentially aggressive rock punches in the caves, and a rich mineral vein as well. Awesome idea. I'm hoping they go with a really cool design for the drill, if it's going to be a huge, massive futuristic drill. Really looking forward to seeing that. And then, finally, there's a little bit about the wrecked ship backstory and some stuff like that. So according to this, there will be a crashed ship somewhere on the planet, presumably that was shot down by the Precursor Array before it was disabled by Riley in Subnautica. Um, and it says that the age of ship is yet to be decided, but it could be between 30 to 100 years old. And it's enough to for the wreck to be overgrown with vegetation, so it will be a really awesome looking thing. It won't just be a broken up ship, it will actually almost be part of the environment now, because that's how the planet works. Um, obviously, it says reason for ship being wrecked is still to be decided. I'm assuming they'll go with the precursor or raid shot down, but who who knows? And also, there's going to be a possible tie to Jeffries and his saboteur storyline, which is an interesting storyline. Don't know a lot about Jeffries personally, but if you do know anything about Jeffries that you think I might find interesting or other commenters, then do let me know. But that is pretty much everything we have to cover about Below Zero for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, we're getting really, really close to 50,000 subscribers now. It's absolutely insane. I think we're going to get there very, very soon. So please carry on subscribing if you do want to learn more about Below Zero, and I'll be doing other games very shortly. Yeah, so basically, that's all I've got, and I'm going to leave it here. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like if you're feeling really, really generous. Subscribe to me, Crunchy David, until the next one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Try, my friends. Yeah.